Cobra Kai revisits old rivals Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence over 30 years after the 1984 classic Karate Kid. Since its move to Netflix last year, it has become one of the most popular series on any streaming platform on planet Earth. I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Cobra Kai star William Zucker. Um, William, you know, by the end of season three, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it yet, go away and come back. The, um, the, the two forces and the, this feud between LaRusso and Lawrence seems to maybe have petered out and they've finally joined forces. So were you as satisfied as the rest of us um, that these two have finally come together? That's a great question. And thank you for the introduction. Um, when you said the biggest, one of the biggest shows on the planet, that's hard to get my head around. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, yeah. I, I think we're, you know, I was ready for, for Daniel and Johnny to see eye to eye for a moment. We have a common enemy. Um, but what's also great is there's a lot of differences between Johnny and Daniel. So moving forward, it's not going to maybe be so easy. Um, but uh, yeah, there was definitely, I have to say after, season two and and uh what happened to miguel and the rehab and and you know all that and fighting crease taking crease on kicking the door open in the dojo at the end and finally getting his vengeance back and you know the crease that took his his co cobra kai out from under him um and then crease coming to choke him out daniel jumping through and you know taking him through a window and paralyzing him and kind of rescuing him. and johnny has a new respect for daniel there's a you know a new re reverence for him and an uh, understanding and for the first time in the, in the series of, at this point they're seeing eye to eye and they have the same heartbeat they have the same uh, mission and that bow at the end of season three was truly truly exciting and it was a great adrenaline rush to play it to watch it um, especially if you rewind 35 years and and uh and the bow before the all valley 84 tournament you know here we are um at this point in the show, uh, saluting, bowing, and, and preparing for battle together. And that was uh, extremely fun and, and exhilarating to play and watch. And where it goes from there is is even as even the same. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about season four, but that ending was so, so satisfying. Like it, it really was. And the music, the way it was directed and just to have you, you and, and Johnny standing there, sorry, you and Daniel standing there um, with Chris just really made my day. And I think it made the day of a lot of people. Um, what was this feeling like on set when, you know, because that was, it was an incredible battle in the final episode, but what was it like on set to have you all pretty much there and um, and then wrapping shooting? All, all there at the end at that end scene, you mean? Yeah. yeah. It, that, it, that was, it was very cathartic. It was very, it was, it was working itself out all the, all the wounded soldiers kind of came into the camp, you know, and, and, uh, you know, forgiving each other, girding up, um, partnering up, letting, putting all the differences aside. Um, those moments are, are really inspiring to play, um, feel good moments, which I love because, you know, on the show, uh, there's a lot of punches. There's a lot of drama, not such so many feel good moments sometimes. So, uh, this is, this was a climax and a setup for season four that, when I read it, it jumped off the page, couldn't wait to play it. And then to watch all the actors, you know, the Hawks and the Dimitris and the Miguel and the Sams, you know, all in Bert, you know, and in, in the backyard and uh, Nate, his little rival. And just to watch all those pieces come together. It's one thing for, for Ralph and I, Daniel and Johnny to do that bow, but you know, they're an extension of us, all these kids. So for them to come in and do it on this kind of one note that was just, like that in harmony and and then you put that music under which i know they discovered in in editing they just one of the editors said i got the song for this and i knew it was coming i knew i was going to feel good but once i watched that episode and then you know all the hits up to that moment and then that song kicks in music is so important it really sets says so much it's all art you know so it was it was yeah. it was awesome it's really it was a great launch part for point for uh season four which we yeah just um what how do you feel about this show's success like we mentioned it earlier but it really has exploded ever since it moved to netflix uh, where it kind of belongs uh, how do you feel about it i'm i'm thrilled i'm thrilled that the the fan base has grown i mean we we had our youtubers we had our loyal fans from the beginning that have been along with us from the og fans you know uh like you i think from uh, the beginning you yep. know when it came out um 
So, and, and then we, we, uh, we grew, it snowballed and then Netflix took it. And uh, then they did something really smart and they didn't release season three. They went back and released season one and two. So everybody else could catch up. So the world could get on board and in at one step go and then, and then drop season three later, which was a brilliant marketing move and a great way to, to kind of embrace everybody rather than just please and feed the, the existing base that was there. So, you know, now we're at, um, you know, and it's it's a great it's a great hug around the world now, and everybody's kind of in step. And the, the fandom is incredible. The artwork that comes back, the messages I get, um, how it's inspiring people, um, giving people uh, you know sense of strength. And I want I can overcome my obstacles. And I want to join karate. And I want to forgive this guy. And I want to call my dad. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's a great it's a great uh, it's a great thing to be a part of. It's really it's really fulfilling in that way. So I'm I'm, I'm super thrilled that we're where we are right now and that people are along it's it's a party in many ways and everybody's kind of uh, joining in you know we're all part of it yeah it's so cool um you know when the show first premiered i was immediately drawn to it because it brought back characters from my childhood and uh i found it so compelling that you know underdog larusso was the successful businessman and family man while tough guy lawrence ended up being down and out I really loved that, um, how they, the show's creators did that. And they said that they essentially turned the tables on these two iconic characters because it felt natural that Daniel's trajectory was going up and Johnny's was at a tipping point where it started to go down. That makes things so much more interesting, doesn't it? And did that attract you to the role? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think that, yeah, that attracted to me to the role, but it wasn't pitched as if uh, John, you know, Johnny was so much the underdog, uh, but he was. Um, it was it was that he was human and uh, they came at him where he is today and they beat him up and they gave him a beer and, a, and some tools and set him in a, you know, an old, what was that car, Trans Am or, you know, uh, you know, it was great. It was a great entry point. It was a great way to uh, to reintroduce the character who is in many ways stuck in his past, is in many ways an artifact of the 80s um, and never kind of arrested development from that period of his life and he's made the best of his world um as a character karate kid aside johnny aside they pitched it to me in a way that listen if karate kid didn't exist the show could still work and we could call it bad sensei and this is about a guy who's trying to work his old stuff out and when they when they explained it that way i instantly understood um what they were going for because karate kid is 35 years ago or so and there's a lot of life that happened in between that so we're not picking up you know, a sequel right after that. We're not copying anything. Um, we've managed to create a, a show that's brand new and relevant today with the backstory being something everybody already has an emotional connection to. Um, yeah. So that, all those things drew me to the part and made sense and felt like it had a lot of uh, gas in the tank. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said that because what surprised, I mean, the, the Karate Kid stuff is the entry point, right? What surprised me most of all, when, when I got over that novelty of revisiting my youth and the fun of the, of the films, the show resonated on a really deeper level, which I did not expect. It's about friendship and redemption and also about the underdog and the bully. And I think that's really powerful. What are your thoughts? Absolutely. Sure. And the perception, you know, I mean, the thing that works about the show is you could look through anybody's lens and, and see it through their eyes and, it, and they're the hero in a way. Um, so yeah, it deals with all of those things, um, you know, and dealing with, you know, there's the age old question of who is the real bully in the karate kid. That's been a lot of fun to play with, you know, and, you know, and Johnny was the true karate kid and Daniel was the bad guy, you know, as people are looking back at the replay and seeing an illegal kick and, you know, that's all fun to play with, but it's deeper than that because the eighties and those movies were, um, the formula was like a classic design, like a Rocky type design. We have the good guy and the bad guy and, you know, and then you have the moment of death where the, the good guy's going down and then this kind of resurrected moment, climactic ending that ends on this positive charge. And the 80s were full of those things. And now we're in a, in a time in, in the world and with streaming media and storytelling where there's more shades of gray. Yeah. And we can go and look at the different depths and we're not necessarily building to, you know, it, the climax in every episode, you know, it's a story that's being weaved together. Um, so I think that's what's what's pulling people in. And it's very much, it's a human story. There's, this is about people. And the fun is we have the karate, the eighties music and karate kid backwards, you know, looking back to reflect on, but um, these are new characters in many ways. Johnny Lawrence to me is a brand new character. He's, he's Johnny Lawrence now. 
he's not Johnny Lawrence in high school. He's Johnny Lawrence with the kid that he's estranged from and a girl that didn't work out. Um, he's not the kid on a motorcycle with a headband and his Cobra Kai's, you know, uh, the king of the world. So this is a brand new character. And those are the things that drew me to the role and said, you know, this isn't, uh, as we say, kind of uh, going after the low hanging fruit of the nostalgia only, but this is, uh, this could live right now in this moment. And I think that's what makes it work. I mean, I know that, I, think, I know that makes it work. Yeah, it does. And it's so true to life because the people that we encounter in high school um, are so different, you know, of, of course people change and mature and lots of water goes under the bridge and we all experience various forms of heartbreak and joy. And so like this is, all those layers are on Johnny and you can see them um, in the way that you perform him. And which brings me to this, um, it's a really mixing, satis well, it's a satisfying mix, sorry, of uh, drama and comedy and action nostalgia. But I think your performance actually as Johnny brings a lot of comedy to the dynamic. I know a lot of people have mentioned this to you. It's something that I really, really love. Um, whether that be trying to re rehabilitate a paralyzed Miguel or his endearingly hopeless use of social media um, do you enjoy the comedic aspects of when you're exploring this character? I love it. I love reading those. I, you know, when I read the scripts, there's some real hard punches, some real hard fighting stuff. There's some good drama. And then when I turn the pages to these moments, I just light up. I love, I love the comedy. One of my favorite scenes, and it kind of says who Johnny is in, in season one, is when Aisha walks into the dojo and she's a girl and she wants to join Cobra Kai and Johnny says, I'm sorry, there's no girls allowed in Cobra Kai. And she says, why not? Well, you know, same reason there's no women in the army. It doesn't make sense. You know, those lines are just um, so hysterical. It's so fun to deliver. But if you do it in a way that is, is sincere and misinformed with a heart on your sleeve, it can work. And then you're not playing it for, first of all, you're not playing it for laughs. It's just funny by itself. Um, but then it can work because of the point of view of where the character's coming from. So I enjoy that. I don't look at any of those moments as comedy. I never play any of those beats for comedy. I play those earnestly as dramatic as the rest. It's the writing that puts it into the comedic frame and then you put it against the, you know, the internet, finding the internet. And also, you know, I was there when the internet came alive. I was there before cell phones. I was there before computer. So in many ways I get to deliver, you know, a, a micro, uh, a micro version and compounded into these episodes um, of what that was like to discover Facebook and the internet and a what's Wi-Fi and all those things. I mean, I had all those moments, you know, oh, what I gotta get Facebook all of a sudden, what's, who's on, what's that, right? So, you know, for those of us that actually went through that transition, it's, it's a real great, um, it's a great uh, reminder and a kind of revisiting those moments and showing how far we've come and, and, and also uh, showing how kind of maybe more simple it was at that time. You know, yeah. and I, I yeah. love that Johnny's uh, all heart and all work. You know, he, you know, he's, he says it like it is. He, he, he means what he says and, um, and he has no apologies and he's, you know, he's give him a tool. He'll fix something. He'll hang a TV. You know, the key to Johnny that was in the karate kid that lives even now is this. The first line in the Karate Kid movie when, that I ever said in any movie was on a motorcycle on top of the hill. And uh, Rob Tommy says, um, uh, uh, who wants a warm one? You know, you're, the, you're still the ace degenerate. And Johnny says, no, ex degenerate. I have one year to make it work and that's what I'm gonna do, make it work. But it didn't work. And that's the key to him. He's still trying to make it work. He's still, every time he gets beat down, he's still trying to make it work. He's a work in progress. And, uh, and he's frozen in time in many ways, but he's also maybe ahead of the game in many ways. And there's something to learn from him. There's something to learn about old school, especially when it comes to the karate and being tough, toughening up our kids, not in a physical aggressive way, but in a yeah. mental way that martial arts really brings to it and the toughness of that. You know, there's an old school kind of toughness my dad had with me, you know? My dad would bring me in the basement when I was a kid and let me punch him in the jaw just so I knew what it felt like. You know, that sounds crazy, but it was like, hey man, we live in New York. It's like, there's some kids on the block. Like you need to know what this feels like. And I get to hit them a couple of times, you know, until I was, you know, seven or something, you know, wow. not that he's training me for that, but there's something about the, the old school kind of uh, ways that I think is fun to watch, entertaining. <laughs> um, and, uh, and he has a long way to go. I mean, Johnny is an evolution in progress and, you know, he doesn't have it all figured out, but there's something forgivable about him and enjoyable to root for because in a way there's kind of a piece of Johnny, I, you know, in, in many of us, I think. 
absolutely. Like, don't, we're all that. We're all a work in progress. None of us are perfect and, none, and we're all working on it. We'll hopefully are. And that's why I just, from the get-go, I really gravitated towards Johnny. I just found that character to be so compelling. And I'm so glad that the show brought some nuance to him. He, you could have just been a cardboard cutout. The whole show could have been. And it's so not. Um, you know, I, I uh, was thinking that, um, you know, you did mention sincerity. That's, I think, the key to the show that a lot of people may not know when, when they haven't seen it yet because it's not tongue-in-cheek. It's very sincere and there's really not a lot of irony and satire where everything else in pop culture seems to be that way, but not this. Um, so how important is that? To you've, met, you've kind of spoken to it a bit already, but is that something that everyone's conscious of or is it something that you're just doing yourself? <clears throat> uh, everybody's conscious of that. I, certainly the writers are. They're being very smart about that. And for me, I just, I approach this with truth. I approach it and... And, and you know, I, I played this character. He's very close to me. And for my storyline and what I serve, um, yeah, I just I, I just go right into the heart of it and blindfolded and uh, and not conscious and not worried about you know so much how an audience is going to respond positively or negatively. It's a very private tunnel vision thing. And as the show's gotten more popular, that's even become more important. You know, to not say, oh, the audience likes this, the audience likes that. They do like that. You know, you just can't think about anything out here. It's like my job is to to get inside the soul of this guy and 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 personify him and trust the lines and trust the editing and trust the sound and the music and and I'm always surprised when I watch it back because how it feels to play the character and how it feels to watch are completely different. Because it's it's in many ways I've said this before, but it's it's painful because he's making choices and saying things that I wouldn't say, but he's not me. So I have to find though I have to, you know, Billy Billy shrinks to about two percent when I play this character. And that's an interesting thing. And I have to kind of decompress when I'm finished. Um, so I just play the truth and, uh, and then trust the rest because we have a fantastic writing team, set of producers. Rob's great. Our cast is great. Um, everybody's doing their part. Um, great, great music uh, composers. Uh, all those elements together. And, and, and we have Cobra Kai. Yeah, absolutely. So I saw on social media that production on season four wrapped recently. And it's likely to premiere at some point later this year, we hope. So obviously you can't tell us anything. I wish you could, um, but what can we expect? Is it going to ramp up even more? It is. It is. The unexpected. I know it's a, you know, it's a, um, people, the fans like to get ahead and put the piece of puzzles together and see what's coming next. And you really can't do that. I can't do that. And I'm playing the character. I get the scripts and I'm surprised when I'm turning the pages. I'm like, oh, really? Oh, wow. And then I got to make a phone call. <laughs> this has to happen. You know, I don't want to give anything away, but I know this will be a fan. The fans will be pleased. Um, the story serves, the actor serves, the kids are great. And we have some new characters in the cast. Um, the, the complexities get more difficult. It's, it's wider and it ends with, uh, with a great crescendo and a, and a crazy cliffhanger again. So um, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be more of the same, but you know, different, but same. It's not going to be season three. It's not going to be two. It's not going to be one, but yeah. it's um, its, its own version in, in this season. And it's uh, its equally satisfying and cool. I can't bloody wait. Oh, can, can I just hurry up and get it all edited yeah. and ready so that we can devour another season? Because we're ready, man. That. We are ready. Amen hey, too, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Congrats on a really strong season three. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. Thank you.